trying to bring this up to speed, though, so that it's like a generation behind all my other ones. <laughs> I'll, do my, I'll do my best. Go for it. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. I am moved and humbled to see all of you here today. Please don't do that. Not that this isn't a celebratory occasion. It is. After all, we had to move from our normal caucus venue to this much larger room to accommodate all of you. And it's exciting to all be here together, and I understand why there's a buzz in the room, uh, a tingle. But applause is for campaigns, and thanks be to the Canadian voter, we won't have to go through one of those again for another four years. There will be a time for that, but now the time is to engage the facts, and the facts are these. After successive majority governments, minority governments, the electorate has seen fit to give us our majority. And not just any majority, but the second largest majority in the history of our country. We have gained seats in parts of the country where heretofore conservative voices have been silenced. Our victory is historic, as you have been reading and hearing. However, we have done this historic thing with the smallest percentage of the popular vote possible. If our, analyzed correctly, our support is broad, but it is thin. If our support was an iced over pond, I could not in good conscience recommend that we place any on it. And beneath that thin surface, it is murky, cold and frigid. We fall into the frigid waters of that pond, and not only might we die, but the work which we have to do will be put on hold while we haul ourselves out, which is inconvenient, exhausting, and uncertain. And yet our mandate is one of change. The electorate has seen fit to give us a mandate to change our finances, our government, and our place in the world along principles we clearly articulated during the election campaign. Change, however, does not come easily in this country. Her Majesty's loyal opposition, although it is in disarray, will resist the change we seek at every turn, and the press will be their willing ally in that resistance. Those are the facts. And so, Given the enormous amount that we have to do and the myriad challenges that we will face, what can we do to accomplish the most possible, as efficiently as possible, with the least resistance possible? You will all have commitments now that you are here. Those of you on committees will have commitments to your committee. Those of you with new cabinet portfolios will have to get up to speed on your department and begin managing the people beneath you. You all have commitments to your constituency. You have commitments to loved ones, to varying degrees. That was a joke, <laughs> but I'm completely serious about this. There is no greater commitment you will make than the one you give here today to me. I ask, in fact, I insist that you commit to the reality that if any one of us fails to exercise discipline where the nation's business is at stake, we all suffer. It is discipline that will see this mandate carried through. Every time in the past that my governments have faltered, it has been because of a lack of this discipline. As Carrie will tell you, when there is a crisis, nothing gets done except work on the crisis. Therefore, you will speak to nobody about your work here. Nobody. Not your friends, not acquaintances, no drunks in an airport lounge. Certainly not the press. 
No one in the blue party machinery. No lobbyists. No loved ones. Let me repeat that. You may not speak to your loved ones about the stress you are experiencing here. If you have stress, if you have concerns, if you simply want to chat, you come to me. This is a wheel we are building. And you are all spokes, and I am the center of the wheel. You all have direct access to me. You come to me and no one else. Harry? Now, we will have a cocktail party to get to know one another. The bar is over there, and it'll be open for 45 minutes. Harry? Sir? No good. Do you see the problem? Uh, hang on. My eyes line, who am I looking at? Uh, Bill Foster? Behind Foster and one to the left. Uh, oh. Yes. Tim Gunner. Yes, which means that when I rise in the House, I will be looking at one conservative politician who thinks it's a good idea to give heroin addicts all the needles they need to use all the opium they want. His writing is in downtown Vancouver. I'm aware. He said it in 2006. Again, I'm aware. Prime Minister, if we move everybody in caucus who's ever done something to offend you from your field of vision, well, there's not enough room behind you, sir. There are 78 new MPs in this cabinet, in this government. Can you not put one of them in front of me? That bench is already loaded with newbies. I wanted to put a few of the experienced members there. Not Tim Gunner. Sir. Carol Bent? Defended the long gun registry. Uh, Anwar Patak. Came out against going into Iraq with the Americans right after I said we should. Ten years ago. Sorry? No. Uh, Steve Quinn. Told his hometown paper I'm an autocrat. He claims he was misquoted. Still, what is he doing talking to them at all? Uh, Roberto Cafaggio. Are you kidding? He was expressing a personal opinion. He was at his home. It was a cocktail party, some journalists overheard him, and it was in, like, 1998. Are you defending him? No, but there's nobody else left who's spending any time in the house. Then fill it with newcomers. I'll keep an eye on them. But, sir. Hi. Uh, either Hello. of you guys got a condom? Uh, I got a new guy in my office. He wants to christen it with me. I'm the new member for Cormier Lagoon. <laughs> Jezebel. Uh, is uh, live, is it? Yeah, Jezebel Lip. Yes, Lip. Call me Jezebel. Yes, or okay. Bella. Yes. Mm -hmm. Call me Jez if you want. I most certainly will not. <laughs> yeah, that's more of a back home thing. So. Is there something I can help you with, Miss Lip? It's a weird ask, I know, but let's face it, it's been a weird day. I haven't got any staff yet. I was going to make some calls, and there I was just sitting in my office, and I'm like, this is my office, my parliamentary office. I'm an MP. That's why I'm sitting there, stunned, and in walks this guy, and he starts asking what questions. What Um, Eric, something like that? I can't remember. Is he press? I think so. He said he works for CBC. Anyways, so I show him my new desk when I'm making out, and he's like, or I'm like, do you have a condom? And he's like, well, I used to, but the campaign was really intense, and now I can't expense any more. It's the game next month, blah, blah, blah. Like, Curly hair? Tough, right? Yes. Evan, is that his name? Yes, Evan, thank you. <laughs> She's going to have sex with Evan Solomon. On her desk? Mm. Not unless someone has a condom. <laughs> you said to come straight to you if we needed anything. I also <laughs> said we shouldn't be talking with anyone. <laughs> See, that's the genius of my strategy. If we're doing it, we we're not talking. <laughs> That's a tactic, not a strategy. Really? Yes. <laughs> Interesting. Clearly, I have much to learn. Oh, I haven't offended you, have I? Your religion, I mean. Your 
not opposed to condoms, are you? No, I have nothing against condoms. Uh, so a few of us were talking about that earlier, about your secret religion. Were you? Yeah. Somebody said you were like a Christian scientist or something Did like that. Did they? Yeah, I'm not a Christian scientist, but one of those other freaky ones. Who were you speaking with about this? One of our guys at the party. Um, tall guy, thin, weird beard. By the way... That was the worst party I've ever seen. Two beer maximum, the whole thing over in half an hour. I think I could be useful, sir, as maybe the person who plans parties for the party from here on out. Personal planning is a strength I feel I could bring to the party. You don't mind, do you, Harry? It's Carrie. I'm going to be screwed for names for a little while. Uh, sorry, I met so many people at the place. The, the riding? Anyways, sorry. I'll be fucked for names for a little while, but once they go in there, they're there for life. Which reminds me, who am I about to have sex with again? Evan Solomon. Right. Evan, Evan, Evan. Okay, so, no condoms in here is the feeling I'm getting, am I right? Hmm. Come with me, Miss Lith. I mean it. Call me Gisbella. Come with me, Gisbella. Uh, no, wait a moment, Miss Lith, if you would. Carrie, would you please get the template? Really? First day? It's a nice little honeymoon we've got going here. We have learned when it comes to personal matters that getting them out of the way early is the best bet. Yes. I uh, appointed an unelected person to have it once. I gave him a Senate seat. Another time I convinced a liberal to become a conservative just days after his constituents had elected him as a liberal. I did both of, both of these things right at the start of my mandate. Get the bad news out early, Miss Lith. That's a strategy. Really? Mm -hmm. What's he going to get? Not condoms? No, not condoms. <laughs> He's going to get a resignation letter. Who's resigning? You are. Um, you can sit in this. You can, I have to move this, sorry, because I can't get around. Sorry. Uh-oh. Maybe not. Can I move it down? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, sorry. You are. You can sit as an independent. I'm just moving you from here all the way over here. You can chat with Elizabeth May. You're firing me because I asked you for a condom? Because you show spectacularly bad judgment and because it's in my interest to do so. We were too successful in the election. You're helping me out. That's so unfair. I haven't done anything. Nonetheless. I won't resign. Yes, you will. I have a file on each of my rookie MPs. Carrie will bring it in. It contains personal details that I can use as leverage, if need be. I haven't done anything. I have no interest in curbing your natural appetites. I just ask that you indulge them outside the Conservative Party of Canada. You fucking prick. And that's the first time anyone's called me that. <laughs> hey, Gary. Carrie. Who gives a fuck? What is a rotten borough? I beg your pardon? What's a rotten borough? It's it's a constituency where you can run any candidate at all, no matter how unqualified, because they have no hope of winning. Cormier Lippo was supposed to be a rotten borough. We were all uh, taken aback by the magnitude of our success. I ran because I was told there was no way I'd win. So, it is possible that I was not there the day my nomination papers were signed. Really? In fact, I guess I have proof I wasn't there. I see. Um, photographic proof. I was in Cancun. You're telling us you committed some sort of election fraud? No, she's telling us we did. Somebody in the party signed her nomination forms for her mm -hmm. and then paid off whoever accepted them. Is that what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Carrie, we won't need the resignation letter after all. Ms. Lith, the defense minister will have condoms in his office. Thank you. Though they may not be the right size. I'll find a way to bury her nomination. We can at least raise doubts about her credibility if she decides to go public with the fraud story. That's fine. What? That's fine. Leave it alone. Carrie? Duval? Goodness, she really has been bad. <laughs> <laughs> 
Strategy. Strategy is long-term thinking about how to achieve a goal. Right. A tactic is an act you undertake in the short term in order to serve a particular strategy. Okay. It really bugs me when people confuse the two. I bet. Can I get a coffee? No. You have a coffee? I do. I mean, what time is it? Shit. Now, uh, there are certain things the press notices and certain things they don't. We sometimes have trouble figuring